Hello YouTube, this is Kim Pocalypse, and today I want to show you this TV, which is a Hisense U7G. Now this is a 75 inch model, so it is an IPS panel. If you get the 55 or 65 inch, it is a VA panel, which has much better contrast, of course. Um, this TV does get up to a thousand nits. Um, with my experience with it so far, it, it does look very, very bright. Um, also, the specular highlights for HDR do pop. Uh, that was one of my big questions and concerns is, do does the bright specular highlights actually pop like, you know, it should? Does sunlight look like sunlight? Does a flashlight look like it's actually on? Um, things like that. So, um, I went ahead, pulled the trigger, got it, got it myself so I could have it in and review it. Um, here is the remote. It's pretty standard. Um, there's the G button, so you can use your assistant. Um, uh, Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime, YouTube, Disney Plus, Tubi. I'm surprised to see that on there. Tubi and Peacock. It is a thin remote. It is very slick. So it will slide out of your hand a few times. But, I mean, all in all, functionality, it works good. And it is Bluetooth. So let's go ahead and turn this one on. Um, as you could tell, now I will say this. The blooming you see around here is not what I'm seeing in real life. Um, that's just the refraction off my camera. Um... So, no worries there. Now, there is some... Here, let me... Uh, let me mute it. Uh, those collars are exactly as I see them on the TV. They're very bright. They're vibrant. They look very, very good. Um, this reminds me of... Remember Samsung when they did the Q8FN, Q7FN, Q9FN? Uh, back when you got a Samsung, but you had to have the box to go along with it. The One Connect box. Um, this reminds me of a Q8FN. I'm not going to say a Q9FN, because a Q9FN would like, it would scorch your eyeballs. But it reminds me of like a Q8FN. Um... So this TV now reminds me of Samsung back when Samsung was worth buying. And I know I'm going to get some comments for that. But uh, if anybody knows from Samsung, the the more years that passed since the, the FN series, the cheaper they're making the TVs. Especially like the Q7 FN. I had one of those, 65 inch. And that thing was beautiful. I mean, picture quality was awesome. But now, if you go to buy like a Q70, what are they are? What are they now? The 70A or whatever. There is no local dimming. The algorithm is very bad on the on. Um, it's edge lit dimming. It's not full array local dimming. It's edge lit, uh, which has got the dual. It's supposed to have the dual um, dual LED panel, whatever. Blah 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 blah. Anyway. Um, if you see them on display in Best Buy, they look bright and, and and beautiful. But once you pop in an HDR10, anything, uh, it dims down to half of what you're seeing, half of the brightness, and it just it's not very. It's I wouldn't own one. I'm sorry, I wouldn't own a Samsung now. Now they have the what's the QN90 and QN85. Those do show promise because they they're very they're very beautiful TVs. They have a great picture, great picture quality. However, you're going to pay for that picture quality. This TV right here, being a 75 inch, it was 1199. You can get a 65 inch for 999, which is half the cost of a Q9 FN. So, Q90 FN. I'm sorry. So, anyway, I'm not here to, to bash one product or another. I'm just saying that this reminds me of back when Samsung actually gave a crap about their uh, customers and 
put out a quality TV. That's what this reminds me of. It's built very well. Uh, the legs are metal. They're not plastic. Um, it's, um, it's, of course, full array local dimming with 120 dimming zones. Now, like I said, this has an IPS panel. Um, the IPS panel does show sometimes, like if you have a really bright scene with like um, the borders at the top and bottom, um, you do notice it. Um, I'm not going to say that you don't, but you don't see it on everything. Um, I, I've seen it on like if it's a dark show and like something pops up that's bright, say like a flashlight then I will see the blooming around that flashlight and down into the bars. So I'm, you know, IPS is not known for great black levels and this one's no different. It's, um, it's not horrible. I ain't going to lie. It's something you can live with, especially if you like, say you like Marvel or, um, Star Wars, uh, things like that. It looks great. It does. Uh, especially if you watch the older Star Wars, and it's full screen. You don't even notice any blooming. It, it looks really good. Um, specular highlights wise, this is, it's a, it's, it's a monster. It's, it really is. I mean, I'm not trying to boast about it over one thing or another, but I'm going to tell you that, let's see if I can find something. Let's go right here. <laughs> Give me just a second. Okay. Now, this is one of those scenes. This is a completely black background with a white, um, what is that? Is that a, yeah, tiger. Okay. Okay. Even better. Okay. See how it says night on earth? Now you can see around, well, on the camera it's worse because on the camera it looks like it's this whole thing, but around the letters, right there just a little bit outside the edges you can see it's blooming um, so it does do a very good job of controlling blooming but because this is such a bright TV on an IPS panel you do see the blooming which is you know I'm not it doesn't bother me as much as it does some people some people are let me tell you what the problem is you got these people that are expecting OLED okay you're not going to get OLED blacks on any LED TV. I'm sorry. Um, you might get it like a TCL 6 series, which comes damn near close, but you're not going to get perfect black. If you want perfect black with excellent contrast, you're going to have to go for an OLED. But let me tell you something. If you buy a 75 inch OLED, you're going to pay triple what this TV costs. This TV is $1199. If you buy a 77 inch, you're going to be paying like $3,500 for an OLED. Um, so you're going to pay for that. Now, you know, I know there's people out there that can afford that, but people like me, no. I'm, I'm not going to go throw $3,500 down on a TV that I can get for a third of the price here and have great picture quality, great brightness, great HDR uh, performance, and I ain't even got to the gaming on this thing. Let, let, let's, let's, just, let's just talk about that. The gaming features on this thing. Oh, Transformers. Uh, the gaming features on this TV is actually spectacular. Um, it has HDMI 2.1 on port 3 and port, port 4. I don't know why they didn't make them all 2.1s, but they did. Uh, this has auto low latency. It has... Free sync, it has G sync, it has all the bells and whistles. The low, the latency on this TV out of game mode is, I think, uh, I think it's like twenty three point something. In game mode, it's eleven point four. That is excellent, and of course, you know they have it's got VRR to prevent screen tearing and stuff like that. And if you're in any kind of gaming, especially if you, if you hook a PC monitor to this TV, I mean, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But, um, I, I just got this TV in, just got it set up, have yet to hook the PS5 to it, 
which isn't going to do any good. I'm going to tell you the truth right now because the PlayStation does not support VRR at this time. It does HDR, but it does not support VRR. And you can tell it on some games because there's some games that, like God of War, um, you can see some screen tearing. Um, especially during, of course, fast-paced action scenes. Um, and it's unavoidable. Now, I do not have an Xbox Series X. They say, according to some reviews, and I'm going to throw a shout out to Joelster, um, who has done it on the, he, he's done the Q6, I'm, I'm sorry, the U6G, the U6GR, and he's done to the U8G, and I believe he has done this TV, except in the 65 inch, not the 75, and the VRR on the Xbox is, is, um, it's a dream come true for gamers. There's no screen tearing. There's no latency. It's just, it's there. And so if you want to do competitive gaming, um, that's what I would get was Xbox Series X. That and they just bought Activision. So, you know, where are you going to go wrong? Anyway, back to this TV. Uh, it has great features. It really does. Um, let's see here. Dum, doo, 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 doo. Um, of course, under your picture settings, you have Vivid. This TV has filmmaker mode, but also, if you go into HDR, which uh, this it's not in HDR right now, of course, um, it has um. Oh, I'm sorry. IMAX mode. So, um, in IMAX mode, there's not a lot of difference for IMAX. Um, let's see, it's got filmmaker mode auto detection. So, anytime filmmaker mode, especially in, uh, I think it's uh, Amazon Prime, um, there's a lot of filmmaker stuff in there. Anyway, um, IMAX mode is, I mean, it's got better sound. Of course, it runs Dolby Atmos. Um, it's I'm not going to say the picture's better, uh, but you get to see more of the picture. Uh, there's more, um, there's more real estate, I'll say. You can see more. So, um, I mean, it, it's okay. Uh, Disney Plus does it. Uh, like if I go into Disney Plus, um, oh, and if you notice, I've got some, i got a light on over here and I got windows open and still this TV is like, doing an excellent job of, you know, battling glare. Okay, so if we go to, let's see, is it Star Wars? Yeah, let's go Star Wars. And is Boba Fett? Nope, that's not one of them. Hold on, hold on. Um, Phantom Menace? Nope. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe it's just the Marvel movies. But I thought it was, well, you know. You know how that goes, right? Okay, let's go to Marvel. Um, Eternals, it's gotta be. And there it is. See, it says uh, IMAX Enhanced right there. Um, and all that does, it gives you a better experience. Instead of just taking up a little bit of the space, it takes up, um, it takes up the bars on the top and bottom. Uh, more than if, I like that it pops up Dolby Vision up in the corner too. That, that's awesome. Now, you see that blooming around the letters coming up? That is not there. That's my camera. Let's see, wanna get forward because I don't like to read. If I wanted to read, I'd get a book, not watch a movie, right? Okay, here we go. Okay, we're just going to stop right here and see. Oh, shoot. Anywho, um, the picture is wider, so you get to see more of the picture. That's all IMAX Enhanced is. You just get to see more real estate. That's all. 
uh, whatever the uh, the producer's camera caught, that's what, or the director's camera caught, that's what you're going to see on screen. Um, see, other than that, I don't really have much to say. And this TV pretty much speaks for itself. Not going to lie, this TV is, is quite awesome. And, uh, there, let's, uh, okay. This TV is quite awesome. It really, really is. It's bright. It's got great picture quality. Um, from Hisense, you know, Hisense, when they first come out, they did decent looking TVs. I mean, they still looked good. Um, but the more they go along, like I had the H9, uh, G last year. It was in a 55 inch. That thing looked awesome. It was like 1500 nits. And so, uh, I got rid of it, got a Sony and I kind of regretted getting the Sony because the only reason I got it is cause I got the PS5 and I wanted it to be compatible fully. And well, you know, they never came out with the VR or update for the PlayStation. They did for the TV, but not the PlayStation. You can see it on one of my past videos. Um, so I decided, you know what, heck with it. And I'm going to go bigger. I went from 65 to 75, which is this TV. Actually, I went to an 82. I did that LG uh, a couple weeks ago and decided that was way too big. Uh, it, it had great picture quality also. Um, it wasn't as bright as this TV. It's only like a 500 nit TV. But uh, the gaming features on it were awesome. It brought up the little thing. It told you how many frames per second you were in and everything. That that was um, that was great. I don't see why more people don't buy that TV. But not an 82 inch, like a small one. But anyway, so this one right here, I went ahead and got a 75 inch, uh, seven inches smaller. Um, seven inches is seven inches. <laughs> anyway, so... I'm I'm extremely happy with this TV. There's there's nothing wrong with the picture quality. The sound is awesome on this TV. Um, I mean I I can't rave about it more. Now there's going to be some flaws, and everybody's going to find a flaw with the TV. Yes, it's an IPS panel. That's the only flaw that I see. The sound on this TV is great. The picture on this TV is great. The brightness in HDR is spectacular. I love it. Um, and that's about it. I can't really say, um, much more to boast about this TV. Now I do want to do a couple gaming videos, so I will be doing that, um, um, between work and doing the reviews. I have to, I have to squeeze things in here and there. So I apologize for being so long in between things, but anyway, um, Get one, try it for yourself. That's what I tell you every time. Get one, try it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. See it for yourself. But um, it's a great TV. I highly recommend it. Even though it's an IPS panel on a 75 inch, if you don't like that, go to a 65 and, and get a, a VA panel. Much better contrast. But I'm going to tell you, there's nothing wrong with the picture on this TV. It is great. But anyway, this is Ken Pocalypse. Uh, like and subscribe to my channel and share my videos, and I'll have more for you next time.